This video reveals the numerous halted construction projects of Evergrande in Kunming. Countless unfinished properties resemble ghost towns, which is truly chilling. The videographer asks, are any of these unfinished Evergrande developments in Kunming ones that you bought? 1. Evergrande Kunming Lake Project, located in Anning Taiping New City, launched in April 2018. The main structure is essentially completed now, but the necessary community compound infrastructure is not yet complete, hence it is not ready for occupancy. Many homeowners, fearing the project would be abandoned, are willing to accept unfinished properties. 2. Evergrande Expatriates City Yang Zhonghai. The residential buildings are half finished, with no progress despite rumours of resumption. 3. Evergrande International Health City. While a portion of the main structure is completed, it's not ready for occupancy. Currently, the doors to the property are firmly closed with no signs of resumption. 4. Evergrande Cultural Tourism City. Not ready for occupancy. Construction has been halted for two years. 5. Evergrande Sunshine Peninsula began development in 2019. Primarily composed of foreign-style apartment high-rise residences, a large number of high-rise buildings and villas are still unfinished. 6. Evergrande City Project, located in the International Members Centre area, started in 2020. The first phase is completed and handed over. The main structure of the second phase is completed, but the facilities are not yet ready, making it not ready for occupancy. The project has now been transferred to other developers and is expected to resume. Evergrande's real estate projects are sold as off-plan pre-sales, so the halt in construction greatly affects the homeowners who bought these properties. On April 17th, due to the halt of the second phase of Evergrande Binghe Mansion in Wanbailing District, Taiyuan City for two years and no hope for resumption, Homeowners flocked to the government office to assert their rights and requested a meeting with the district mayor in an attempt to solve the problem and restart construction. The aforementioned unfinished properties by Evergrande are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to its halted projects. In September 2022, Evergrande claimed to have 706 halted projects in hand and here we only list a few of its most prominent ones. Firstly, there is the infamous Lotus Football Stadium in Guangzhou, which remains unfinished. In April 2020, Evergrande acquired the project for 6.8 billion yuan, with the project area reaching 490,000 square meters. The Lotus design was reportedly conceived by Evergrande's chairman, Xu Jiaying himself, and was referred to as the Light of Evergrande. However, it was mockingly referred to by the public as resembling a glass ashtray and considered extremely ugly and tacky. Following Evergrande's financial crisis, the company's projects were also halted. On August 3, 2022, Evergrande announced the rights to the parcel of land for Guangzhou Evergrande Football Stadium have been returned and the company anticipates recording a loss of approximately 1.26 billion yuan due to the transfer. The Evergrande Royal Lake World project has also been labelled as the most incredible abandoned property in the real estate sector. The project is located in Xinxiang City, Henan Province, where Evergrande has spent millions constructing the project's grand entrance. After the project was abandoned, only the grand entrance was left standing amidst a wasteland of overgrown weeds, without a single brick or stake in sight. Some netizens joked, did they forget to build the houses? Others said, maybe all the houses were sold and taken away by people, so only the entrance remains. Yet, others jestingly claimed, it's not surprising it's the most incredible unfinished project, with an entire property reduced to just one entrance. The third on the list is the Hefei Evergrande Centre, 
located at the intersection of Nanning Road and Hershan Road in the Binghu New District. In September 2017, the Evergrande Centre project was halted due to environmental issues. In addition to the Evergrande Centre project, Evergrande also has three unfinished projects in Hefei: Evergrande Crystal International Plaza, Longchun Road Evergrande Office Building in the Administrative District, Evergrande Central Plaza, 200 meters tall Evergrande Twin Towers of Yaohai District, and the North City Evergrande Hotel. The fourth one is the Evergrande Jinan International Finance Center, a masterpiece with an investment of up to 25 billion yuan. In addition to the above-mentioned famous unfinished buildings, Evergrande also has many well-known unfinished projects, such as Evergrande Super Headquarters Project, acquired land for 5.5 billion yuan, with a total construction area of 343,000 square meters. And building height of 400 meters, Evergrande Ningbo City of Light, with a total construction area of approximately 730,000 square meters, and a total investment of about 13 billion yuan. The tower is 450 meters high. Evergrande Group, simply known as Evergrande, is a large Chinese conglomerate based in Shenzhen. Founded in Guangzhou by Xu Jiaying in 1996. The group's core business is real estate development. It grew during the prosperous era of China's real estate sector, becoming one of the major real estate developers in China, and thus making Evergrande a core force in the Chinese economy. In the course of its continuous development, Evergrande projects spanned more than 200 cities nationwide, while also expanding into diversified businesses such as new energy vehicles. Tourism, sports, finance, healthcare, and aged care. In September 2021, Evergrande Group was deeply mired in a debt crisis, owing suppliers, creditors, and investors a total of 1.97 trillion RMB, equivalent to over 300 billion US dollar, roughly accounting for 2% of China's GDP in 2020. According to a report published by Chinese financial media Economic View, on May 29, Evergrande Real Estate Group Limited, along with its subsidiaries, which we will now refer to as the issuer, announced significant litigation and failure to repay due debts. The announcement stated that as of the end of April 2023, the issuer's unmet due debts amounted to approximately. 2,725 billion RMB. The Evergrande crisis intensified the turbulence in the real estate market. Following Evergrande, prominent real estate companies such as Kaiser, Sunak, and RNF experienced debt issues, causing an indirect blow to the real estate industry chain and the financial market. The crisis has also resulted in numerous project delays. In this volatile environment, the crisis of Shenzhen Real Estate Company Kaiser Group has been escalating with increasing difficulties. The chain of events included the resignation of the chairman, major shareholders selling off their shares, a halving in the share price, loan defaults, partners withdrawing investments, financial institutions applying to seize assets, and debt defaults. Kaiser Group is steadily sinking into a desperate situation. With the lack of response from the government, homeowners of Kaiser properties started to stand up for their rights. According to a report by Huasha Times, several homeowners of Kaiser City Plaza in Shenzhen said that if the situation continues to worsen and the developer goes bankrupt, leading to the suspension of the construction. Tens of thousands of homeowners risk losing their properties and seeing their hefty down payments evaporate, all the while shouldering millions in bank loans. The report mentions that among the owners who purchased properties at Kaiser City Plaza, most have made full payment, while some have only paid a deposit of fifty thousand RMB. After Kaiser plunged into the crisis. Homeowners lacked channels to acquire real-time information and necessary means to preserve their assets 
feeling helpless. One homeowner stated, "We scraped together our down payments with great anticipation of buying a home, but never imagined that such a large listed company would face problems." Another homeowner left a comment online saying, "We have been struggling in Shenzhen for years, investing the efforts of three families and two generations, bearing heavy bank debts, hoping that one day we could have a home of our own, no matter how small." No longer drifting around, but now all is lost. An insider familiar with Kaiser's situation disclosed, "If the boss Guo Yingchen doesn't step forward, the people beneath him don't know what to do." Currently, all projects of Kaiser Group cannot be transferred, and debts cannot be repaid. Kaiser can only reduce company expenses through layoffs and salary cuts, with no other viable solutions in sight. Insiders of Kaiser have said to Chinese media that they are currently powerless. According to the underground reporting by Epoch Times, on June 30, homeowners from different phases of Kaiser City Plaza in Qingyuan City of Guangdong Province staged a rights defense protest in front of the Qingyuan government and at the Kaiser Sales Center due to the developer's failure to deliver properties on time. And the stripping fully finished apartments to shell apartments. Their protest was met with violent suppression from the police, resulting in some homeowners being forcefully removed from the scene and detained. Homeowners on site said that at 11 a.m. on June 30, some of the affected homeowners from Qingyuan Kaisa City Plaza went to the Qingyuan City government to defend their rights. They were driven away as soon as they reached the entrance and ended up by the roadside. Around noon, the police began forcefully clearing the area, with several officers tackling each homeowner, pulling them onto two buses parked at the roadside. During the removal, some homeowners knelt down crying. Some were violently beaten by the police, and others were dragged away by several officers. As shown in a video provided by the homeowners, a homeowner sarcastically said on the moving bus, "We've been put on the bus. The government will take us to a five-star hotel for free food and accommodation next." It is reported that some homeowners were interrogated by the police until 2 a.m. before being released, while others were detained after giving statements and subjected to blood tests. On the afternoon of the 30th, another group of affected homeowners went to the Kaiser Sales Department to understand the situation better, and were similarly met with violent suppression from the police. An informed homeowner, Jiang Hua, a pseudonym, described that around 5 p.m. that day, a large number of security personnel and police stormed into the sales center and violently expelled homeowners. Some homeowners were handcuffed. And taken away, while others were forcefully carried away by four policemen, with one homeowner shouting loudly, "Can I walk by myself?" Zhang Hua described the scene as miserable, lamentable, and added that some homeowners have still not been released. He further revealed that the date was the delivery date promised in previous official negotiations between the relevant government department, developer, and homeowners. March 10 this year was the original delivery date for buildings 10, 11, 13, 14, 15 by Kaiser. The Qingyuan Housing and Urban Rural Development Bureau held a meeting with Kaiser and homeowners on March 15, promising to deliver the shell apartments by June 30. When homeowners asked about the condition of the supervised account funds during that meeting, the Qingyuan Housing and Urban Rural Development Bureau. Cited commercial secrets as the reason for not disclosing the usage of the trust account funds, and did not penalize Kaiser. Originally, August 25 of the previous year was the contractually agreed delivery date for buildings four, five, six, eight, nine of Kaiser. However, on August 10, homeowners received a notice from Qingyuan Deren Real Estate Company Limited. Stating that the delivery would be delayed due to the impact of the pandemic, Zhang Hua stated that to this day, the properties have not been delivered, 
despite numerous delays. Even though the developers' contracts with the owners explicitly state that they will be delivered as finished units, and Kaiser's advertisements also promise delivery of finished units, the Housing and Urban Rural Development Bureau refused to deliver finished units on the grounds that the developer's record is for unfinished units. In fact, the previously delivered buildings 7 and 12 by Kaiser were finished units. However, when it came to delivering buildings 4, 5, 6, 8 and 9, they refused to deliver them as finished units on the grounds of lack of proper documentation. Zhang emphasised, our demands and immediate completion of inspections, delivery of finished units and compensation for breach of contract. We have appealed to governments in Qingyuan City and Guangdong Province, but they keep passing the buck and avoiding the issue. The officials are unsightly in their behaviour, colluding with the developers and merely sending police for violent enforcement. Property owners have no recourse but to leak information overseas in hope of assistance. The countless unfinished projects by real estate companies like Evergrande and Kaiser not only undermine the trust of ordinary people, but also that of banks in developers' ability to resolve the problem of unfinished buildings. Although China has never officially released the number of suspended or unfinished properties nationwide, according to a report by the Chinese newspaper Economic Observer on June 16, citing a survey conducted by the third-party information platform Century Architecture Network on the progress of more than 1,000 projects nationwide, as of the end of May, the delivery progress in South and North China was relatively good with rates of 56% and 40% respectively. In southwest and central China, the delivery rates were only 15% and 16% respectively. The province with the lowest delivery rate was Henan with only 11%. Xu Xirong, a professor of land policy at Taiwan's National Chenqi University, believes that China's crisis of unfinished buildings is a political issue. He said in an exclusive interview with Voice of America that land development often brings huge profits. Many powerful individuals in various regions of China have invested in land development and real estate trading to varying degrees. Under the influence of local governments, banks lend to developers, resulting in large amounts of capital being poured into real estate and creating space for land speculation. Xu Xirong estimated that the so-called guaranteed delivery policy was adopted by China to help such developers, aiming to provide them with time to reduce losses. Most of these developers belong to the upper echelons of society and they have strong economic capabilities. Their ability to influence public policy is also strong. Chinese developers often have close relationships with local governments. If they suffer heavy losses and have to pay a lot of money, these developers might be reluctant. They might demand that the government must provide some relief. However, it's not easy for developers to receive relief funds. The Economic Observer quoted a source close to China's Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development saying that after the first batch of applications were compiled, it was found that the initial 200 billion yuan was far from enough. Therefore, commercial residential projects, which might have investment attributes, were screened out to prioritise residential projects. There were also property enterprises that had already applied for special loans but had to return the loans due to an audit finding that the value of their assets was not up to standard, leading to the suspension of the project again. The report quotes a local government official saying that it is unrealistic to depend solely on relief funds for the delivery of properties. The two batches of special loans amount to a total of 400 billion yuan, intended for approximately 4 million units of housing. However, Evergrande alone has 1.5 million units awaiting delivery nationwide, and developers may not necessarily have sufficient assets for collateral. Professor Xu said that the 400 billion yuan 
in relief funds is like a drop in the ocean in solving China's problem of unfinished buildings. Whether it's special loans or supporting financing, these are labor-intensive and high-risk projects for banks. Xu stated, "China is too big. Every local government is constructing buildings. It's not just an issue of a single city. Relying solely on 400 billion yuan to solve the problem is indeed a drop in the ocean. Property prices have fallen significantly compared to the past." So when banks take over the collateral, it becomes their liability. Most banks in China are state-owned, which poses a major headache. He also pointed out that real estate is a significant part of local governments' economies in China. If the issue of unfinished buildings cannot be resolved, it could potentially drag down government finances and disrupt the balance of urban development.